hkz.tv's no, not cricket studios not studios but huge surprise huge momentum i'm not going to reveal it straight away you know full of surprises full of celebrities full of dignitaries around the world from vision arabia from the academy from cricketers from stars from bollywood from lollywood bringing you surprises at all times not in the studio but nice greenery outside in a private garden private venue guess who with your one and only Wasim Akram, King of Swing. I'm not going to give any more extended interactions because I need to get in with Wasim. Wasim Slaikam and good afternoon. Wa alaikum salam and good afternoon to everyone and to you as well. How are you? I'm good. Really enjoying the weather. Uh, this part is has been a part of me from last, I think, 20 odd years. So every summer I'm, I'm here for a month and a half just uh, outside Manchester. I love it here. Yeah, it connects you to your local counties, memories, they say old is gold. And I was just going to say it before you said it, welcome back to the UK. Like in Dubai, they say, welcome back home, no matter where you come from. Yes, I mean, I like coming here. I have lots of friends, uh, people I've played with, people I've played against. They just live nearby. We meet up, we go out for meals. And I think uh, my kids, both the boys were born here. My younger daughter is here now, first time. She's only six months today. But again, it's a, it's a tradition in my family. Come here every summer for a month and a half and enjoy the hospitality and the weather. We can see that you enjoy it. Well, a belated congratulations from all at HKZ.TV for the young new arrival, only six months old. And obviously, we see you were sharing some time with your skipper as well over in Pakistan. I got a photo that came through. <laughs> yeah, I was with him for a couple of nights. He invited us. Me and Shanira went, had a great time. He looked after us and uh, Mrs. Imran uh, Reham looked after us very well. We enjoyed it. And again, it's always pleasure spending time with Imran. You always learn whenever you're with him on and off the field. And he has been inspiration not just for me I think for uh, every Pakistani he's doing a huge job for Pakistan so for you to see him from the cricket and yourself and I want to talk about you mainly because the shows about you you having friends like that associates like that how does it make you feel because you're still looking as dashing and as handsome as always no doubt and I want to I want to know what the secrets about secrecy behind this you know um, shall we say Raz in the sense is what is the secrecy it's, there is no uh, secret, such secret. It's, uh, it's a lifestyle. Um, I've just turned 49. I think uh, it's, it's, uh, I go through my phases. I, I believe every, probably everybody does go th do go through their phases as well. That I had took two weeks off, but I exercise regularly. I sleep early. I'm up early at 6 o'clock, 6.30, ready to go, ready to uh, you know, go out for my run or walk or whatever, every six days a week. And I think uh, I go to bed early. By 10, 30, 11, I'm gone because I wake up early and I think since that, uh, since then I started this last six, seven years ago, this, this routine and I think my health uh, has improved as well. I'm mentally and physically very strong. That's what you have to be mentally and physically. So you believe in the old saying then that they say that early to bed, early to rise makes them matter. Not about the wealthy, but healthy, wealthy and wise, but you've got it all. Yes, uh, uh, but I remember when I was young, when I was playing cricket, I, I, you know, I wanted to sleep till three in the afternoon. But again, uh, in Urdu, uh, Urdu they're saying, Deir ay, durust ay. I think <laughs> it's never too late. Come late, come securely. Yeah, it's never too late. So I think I'm on the right track and I'm enjoying my life, enjoying the family life, my kids, my younger daughter. And uh, mashallah, everything is going well. You're enjoying it with your family. You've come a long way. A lot of cricketers, you mentioned cricket there, have passed on, got, gone into other things, become coaches. You're a, a legend of your times and you are. You're the king of swing, the bowler who had its uniquities, who had something awesome to present and give to the international community. When you sit alone, how does that make you feel when you commemorate? Uh, I retired about 11, 12 years ago almost. It's a long, long time ago. But again, uh, uh, the love I get from just uh, not in my country. Uh, my uh, Pakistan is living abroad uh, or Bangladeshis or Indians or Sri Lankans or even, uh, even people who recognize me here. I think they enjoyed the way I played my sport. They enjoyed how passionate I was. And I think they, 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 they loved uh, 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 my cricket, my, my style of cricket, very aggressive. And I think that was me as, as a cricketer and as a person. But I'm a lot laid back now. I'm quite relaxed in life now. I believe in hard work because I believe, very simple saying, nothing is easy in life and with hard work you can, you can, you can actually succeed. When people labelled you as the king of swing, how does that make you feel? What do you think? Uh, obviously, uh, I, it feels good. Uh, 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 you know, when I was young, I worked for it. That people should remember me, would remember me when I retired. And I think they still remember me and they still... Uh, luckily, there's a YouTube now, so <laughs> people can still watch me on YouTube, my clips and my, you know, wickets and all. So it's great. It's it's uh, unbelievable life, Touchwood. You know, 
youngsters, there's, say, there's a saying that, you know, people pass on and the new generation, not really, how many of the older generation is remembered, but you're right, the internet is such a fast moving thing with YouTube. Youngsters, I mean, my own nine-year-old knows you and would know your stats most probably or would know your games that you may have just mishapped or, or missed. How does that make you feel that the youngsters of today's generation knows what's the Makram? Unbelievable feeling when nine years old, ten years old kids come up to me and, and, and they are in awe of me. And I do ask them once in a while, do you know who I am actually? <laughs> said, I don't know, you have a Seema Kram, King of Swing. <laughs> I said, how do you know this? You're only ten. He said, there's a thing called YouTube. I said, okay, okay fair enough. Technology, the 21st century, that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Technology, 21st century, king of swing, the one and only Wasim Makram, who all came with something unique and has it still today. Talking here with HKZ.TV, not Cricket Academy, directly with HKZ.TV. You're at the moment in the UK, you've got a lot of friends. What are your plans for the future in cricket? A lot of people stayed in cricket, a lot of people became coaches. You've become a very successful commentator. How do you feel still being part of the game, if not playing, which you have? You're a very good player. I think you play, you know, um, many games here and there. You're a fit person. You were just talking that you just came back from an hour and a half's run. You're on your way to the gym later on in the evening. How does it make you feel still being part of the cricketing world? Uh, that's the only thing I know. Uh, cricket, either when I played and now after retirement I realized uh, what, what, what else I can do. Business, not a clue. Uh, never did business in my life. Coaching, uh, uh, my patience is not there. I'm a very, so like I said, I'm a very action oriented person. Uh, so I want to do everything myself. Uh, and then I realized commentating. It's hard work on, 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 on you know, mentally it is. But you have to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. And obviously, uh, then when the cricket starts, it's all fun. It's, that's the only thing I know. And I enjoy every bit of it and there's no pressure in commentary there's a lot more pressure in coaching uh, uh, and that's why I think I enjoy commentary where I can do my job day off means day off day off doesn't mean you have to practice in coaching you have to practice with your team so these little details and I it's 10 years I've been commentating and I'm enjoying every every minute of it but you know you have something to fall back on god forbid anything hadn't worked out for you you're a graduate anyway so you had that backup plan that you could have gone into anything had you wish but you stayed within your passion within the cricket yeah i mean i wasn't the great student i think i just passed through and i didn't uh, i wasn't a graduate at all i finished uh, i was in second year of my college when i got picked up for pakistan team luckily <laughs> but i think uh, uh, my passion was this 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 beautiful sport cricket and i think it still is and uh, i my life uh, will uh, revolve around uh, this, this this sport it's a sport but it's very dangerous as well it can make you it can break you and we've seen a lot of injuries and a lot of disasters graduate and the master of the game i call you king of swing and my aim is to see in the way you present yourself i mean prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our great prophet and historians were not you know very learned as that but today they're known as the masters of their times as you are known as a master of your game what's your message to those children and those people out there in the world who are in the cricketing the ball is nobody's friend to start with you can make it or break it if you break it should there be a backup is what in which way we were going for the future of children or a youngster? I think a uh, simple message would be what I did when I was young. I just uh, played cricket every day with passion. I used to practice four hours a day. It's the same club, Batao Rahman. Uh, played for Ludhiana, Jim Khana. I used to go there at two o'clock, uh, bowl till about six o'clock every day. I did that for two years and luckily I got picked up for Pakistan, but hard work. Do whatever, but Jobi, uh, 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 you know, I'll, I'll say this in Urdu, then I translate. Jobi karna in the zarur karo but mehnat ke saath karo do whatever you want to do in life but you got a hard work and you will succeed and you will reach your goal and always aim to be the number one 
because if you aim number one you might finish at number two if you aim at number two or three you'll finish up fifth and sixth so that's what i did just simple and and straightforward uh, i think message i can pass on to the youngsters or whoever wants to play f- this sport any player of yours that you feel very close to around the world you've got friends you've got associates you're you're a man of the game you mix with everybody anybody that you're very very close to and you feel heart goes out to an individual no i i have i have friends everywhere and in in england team i mean i played for lancashire for 10 years i played uh, against every team in the world for 20 years i'm a very easy going person i can make i make friends very easily so all the cricketers we meet each other the co commentators the working colleagues and we all get along beautifully and i i enjoy my life because my life is simple straightforward and that's the way it should be less stress is better food wise come on to food how do you maintain yourself what's your what's the secrets of your you know handsomeness still to date people pass on and i've seen you when you're slick with a suit out there on a forum on an arena and it looks wow there goes a young like a model still and i've seen you and i'm not just saying it i've seen you at ceremonies a couple of times i bumped into you at uh, with the kids at one of the games at um, when i think it was edgebaston so we do know here you're relaxed you're at home it's a total personal meeting this was all unexpected we just met to talk but what is the secret behind that what would you say your tips are from morning to evening in maintaining yourself when you wake up from like 6 a.m. in the morning right the way through tonight before you go to bed at 10:30 I think uh, uh, before I start uh, before I go on to my routine I generally less is more as far as food concern in our culture is revolve around food you know we at breakfast we talk about what we're going to have for lunch and lunch we talk about what we're going to have for dinner uh, and and it's a timing i eat early I eat less carbs. I try to eat less carbs. Obviously, I love biryanis. I love niharis, but once in a while, and in a in a very uh, sort of a, a, a small portions, you know, that's the that's the trick to 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 trick your mind uh, uh, over. If you try it for a month and a half to try to eat less, and eventually the mind will accept it, and when you eat less, your tummy will be full. and that sort of uh, little tricks you got to use with your mind and that helps and my routine is wake up at 6:30 go for my run if i am england or i'm where i can go outdoors i like running outdoors australia i was there for 3 months for the world cup and new zealand uh, beautiful and over here weather is beautiful as well and then uh, i i come back i do if i'm in karachi i have to do a lot of stuff for home stuff and you know in general maybe a couple of jobs here and there and afternoon i take a nap once in a while for half an hour 40 minutes then go to gym for an hour 40 minutes and then be home relax maybe swim a little bit yeah but i do keep on moving i don't just stay still this is the secret <laughs> so the secret is constantly on the move eating less maintaining it intervals and um, enjoying it overall because if you don't enjoy it you can't do it absolutely this is life is all about you got to work hard you got to enjoy it otherwise there's no point living <laughs> when You look back of your years when you look into that mirror do you see was he makram or do you see a legend and making in the past what do you say do you feel that star you know a lot of people say i like the leap kumar would say that he was the leap kumar <laughs> yusuf khan the old bollywood star um now how do you feel was he akram i just feel good when i when i wake up and uh, uh, i don't feel i don't think of myself as wasim akram i want to feel good and with exercise and good family uh, lifestyle and kids love me and my wife uh, is also has been a plus uh, uh, on me uh, her influence has been very positive but uh, uh, generally like i said i'm very easy going and that helps uh, me to calm myself down and when you calm you can make the right decisions in life isn't it Absolutely is that what's calmed you down then you're you know relaxed and you you're right when you're calm you do take you know you commemorate and you you you, you things come to you rather than making hasty decisions apart from your work and your career and your you know commenting and your cricket and everybody talks about it to you all along and it's a passion like you said until you don't have the passion it's not there what seem also you're a very human person you're a people's man and you know no one really highlights that which is great but you're actually you run a foundation uh, which is the Wasim Akram Foundation tell us a bit about that tell us about why why has the Wasim Akram Foundation come about there's a persona of a lot of foundations and people and charities etc but um you're the individual that doesn't really go out and promote or you don't it's not visible all years around but the work actively is going on which is the aim that i'm trying to get to the international community 
Yeah, we launched it about two months ago, officially. Uh, obviously, we've been working on it for the last couple of years. And Shanira, my wife, has been very influential uh, in that to create that foundation. The, it was always my idea. Uh, uh, it, was I, it was always, not the idea is the word, I always wanted to help uh, uh, the average Pakistani. They go through a lot, you know, uh, in general, apart from uh, uh, earning money for their food, education for their kids. They go through load shedding, they go through water shortages. And look at the tragedy happened in Karachi. Uh, a thousand plus people died because of the hot weather and I think that's where a foundation this is the idea behind it in a long run to help certain not just one particular cause or a certain cause wherever the help required the Akram foundation will raise the money and try to uh, uh, you know uh, 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 help uh, those affected with that tragedy or whatever has happened like Karachi we have been supplying water from last three to four days whatever the money we raised on on the launch uh, we're trying to that's what we did in last four or five years so Shanira has been behind a manager uh, Arsalan, Ifra, uh, my, the, 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 the volunteers with Akram Foundation it's a very different sort of foundation you can go online you can go up from foundation website and 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 uh, uh, you know join uh, the website as a volunteer and we will get uh, back to you and if we need anything need your help we'll be needing a lot of volunteers not just in Pakistan worldwide to help people all over uh, Pakistan in future this is the idea behind it very simple very straightforward there you go very simple very straightforward like you see a lot of successful foundations run at the end of the day with the community Wasim has touched base on when he says volunteers volunteers always rise from the genuine from the hard input individuals who have that Nike who have that understanding of the international sufferings I mean Ramadan and the festive season is supposed to bring about that and instill in you right now that the appreciation of all the food and the dining and the iftar times where you know, the sunset when you're eating and exactly what Wasim is touching upon that it doesn't work without you volunteers so if you're a volunteer he's mentioned that there's a Wasim Akram Foundation website you you know register your interest and maybe ideas that I always say stress about that how it could benefit the community how it could benefit the needy just like other foundations are doing to a certain degree but you it's for you to look upon your stars upon your legends who've, who've, who've done their game so they don't need to benefit from anything on that side they've lived their momentum they're very living luxuriously in their own lifestyles it's all set for them but to have that knack and that feeling and that understanding for the genuine suffering underprivileged international community is where you volunteers step into you can always log on to we'll see Makram Foundation as well as send us your queries at www.hkz.tv we're more than happy to push it forward because on the other part of the break I'm going to be discussing in how we are going to take that initiative to put that on the international agenda with the causes with some clips with some videos with some incentives in where the volunteers can stem from and that's good Global. And the beauty of HKSZ.TV is we're not bound to any one, shall we say, constitution or jurisdiction. We are global, reaching out to a global community and 99% live. So we seem that's, you know, ex elaborate. What's your vision where you want to, apart from, like you said, you've got all different areas that you'll be looking at. What made you want to come into the foundation part? You don't need to, but you've taken the initiative. I just wanted to help people uh, uh, always and I think now I have the time and that's why this idea came about. The idea was always there but it came into reality with Shanira who pushed me and pushed the team around and gave them a lot of ideas from different perspective. But uh, over and all, like I said, I have the time and always wanted to help. This is I owe the, the, uh, at least this much I owe back to my country and people of my country who still love me. Any other individuals supporting you on that at the moment apart from your wife? No, we have uh, we have a board. A lot of people are on their board, educated. The lawyer is there. A couple of my friends are there. Uh, my sons are there as well, Temur and Akbar. Uh, so uh, we we may we make decisions. We have a board meeting. We make decisions. A little bit of money we have to to distribute and what to do. Everything is in a right order. So hopefully it's gonna grow. But that's that's where I think it's just a little starts by step by step. You know, at least we're on the right track. So we're seeing you got your boys back into the foundation. Any plans to bring them into the cricketing world? Uh, one is 17, one is 15. I think uh, uh, they, 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 they are into other sports. Uh, um, their interest wasn't uh, in this uh, sport as much. So I, I'm, like I said, uh, easygoing dad. Whatever kids want to do, I'll support, I'll support it. And uh, they're excelling in their uh, school. And young, I'll, uh, Temur is off to uni in, uh, in August in Pittsburgh. So uh, it's, it's very exciting.
There you go. So that speaks that, you know, being the easygoing parent. And nowadays, if you're not the friends of your parents, then I think you're going to miss out on a lot because the kids are going to do what they want anyway. But when you blend in with them as friends, I think you bring about peace, harmony and a successful track to traverse upon and move forward. Any messages in the cricketing world? So much cricket right now is happening around the world. Cricket must have changed drastically from your times and has changed, you know, from what you were, the conditions you were in, from what the conditions are in society and today with the way cricket is. And a lot of, you know, stylish cricket, with entertaining cricket. Yeah, definitely has changed. More entertaining, that's for sure. I think uh, for a batsman point of view, very entertaining for crowds, for T20 format. And then for bowlers point of view, it's, it's going the other way, unfortunately. Reverse swing is gone. It's a forgotten uh, sort of art now. Nobody bowls it anymore. Umpires are so strict. Uh, so that art is gone. And it's, that was the beauty uh, of fast bowling. When uh, flat wickets, nothing is happening with the new ball. Wait for the old ball and try to get some more wickets. But that's not happening anymore. So tragedy but over and all it's it's fun to watch cricket nowadays uh, 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 because I'm retired so I can I can enjoy bowlers <laughs> I can enjoy seeing bowlers getting hammered all the time in t20 format it's fun it's entertaining you apart from a bowler you're you're pretty good with the bat as well you're a batsman as well so does that used to come as a bonus to you or did you used to practice for that did you want to be a bowler did you want to go out there and put some runs like you used to do anyway you've won the match for your teams many times how did that make you feel no. I always wanted to be an all-rounder. I mean, Imran was my hero, still is my hero, so I wanted to be like him. Uh, but I wanted to be a bowler who can bat. I didn't want to be a you know bit of that and bit of that. So I said I wanted to be fast bowler who can scare the batsman and then go and uh, have a tonk. So I, I, I enjoyed my batting but I didn't concentrate it as much. Reason, I wanted to be the bowler. Not, not, not like you know, a little bit of bowler and a little bit of batsman. So you're neither here, neither there. I'm glad I, I, I made the right choice. What mindset did you used to go out there with? What used to be your mindset? Any particular mindset that you remember today that you went out there, you delivered, and it worked for you? <laughs> mindset was always very positive. Uh, all never. Uh, uh, thought that I'll fail while uh, going out to bat or going out to bowl. Um, always believed in my ability, always believed in my homework, my hard work and I think uh, that's where you evolve as a sportsman or as a person in life. Any game you remember in particular that you thought that this cup or this game is gone, it's slipping from our hands or that we may not get it? We played so many close games in our era. I mean we used to win I mean, against Australia, England, all out 140, then uh, defended the total very easily with me, Vakar there. It was fun uh, bowling uh, with Vakar on the other side, Mushtaq Ahmed was there. A lot of people, I mean, we had a very good side. World, we, we, were, we were world beaters in mid-90s. We, we actually uh, tra toured everywhere and, and, and won uh, the series. Uh, apart from Australia, I think we won tri-series there. Uh, but uh, we won everywhere else, in England, in New Zealand, in South Africa, in, uh, in, in West Indies. So it was fun. I mean, uh, that's why I think people still remember us. We had a very golden time. 90s, you're right, people still remember you. you touched base there on the 90s. Tell us about 1992 World Cup. Yeah, that was uh, the ultimate moment. If uh, somebody will ask me what's the, what's the moment you would remember, it's the World Cup 92, winning it and that too at the MCG and that too in front of 80, 90,000 people and plus the whole country watching in Pakistan and all Pakistani watching all over the world. It was unbelievable. It was dream come true and that definitely uh, was the moment of my cricketing career. Don't you think Divinity stepped into there and the way Pakistan scooped to get into that semi-final? Yeah, it was. It was uh, uh, prayers. Uh, it was the, 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 the leadership of Imran Khan, the way he was confident and obviously the hard work we all put in. But in the end, we peaked at the right time. Absolutely. Looking at yourself today in the very trendy Pakistan that you see, there are different batsmen, different bowlers, they're a complete different team. You don't know what they're going to come out with today from what you guys were. The strength people say was the old Pakistan. What's your comments on that? It's a young side. They hardly play any international cricket. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's, let's, let's don't be hard on these boys. Uh, they play very... Uh, Really international cricket, whatever they play, either they play in Dubai, or they play against Bangladesh or Sri Lanka. And uh, domestic cricket uh, is in shambles and nobody is concentrating on domestic cricket and then suddenly they want to win the World Cup. That's I still 
can't get over uh, and uh, you know you have to invest money in there and then Pakistan uh, cricket board needs to organize a lot of tours a tours under 19 tours that's not happening all our academies are just there but nothing is happening so the talent is there the passion is there we just needs to we just need to channel it and that's not happening when you're commentating and Pakistan is playing and at times you see things are not going obviously your ties your links are Pakistan you are a Pakistan player, you are the legend, you're king of swing, you're Wazim Akram and you know you led your team with your skippers and with your teammates. When they're going off track or when they're about to lose or they're not about to pull through, do you feel anything at that time? Of course I do. But uh, being a professional, I have to hide my feelings. I have to say whatever is happening on the field. If if they're playing uh, uh, um, good cricket, I'll play. I'll, I'll definitely uh, uh, you know uh, praise them. And if they're not playing good cricket, and if they're playing negative cricket, then I will obviously I'll pinpoint that as well. So that's my job as a neutral commentator. But yes, in the end, you you do feel a little bit of trickles of sweat sweat coming out from here with anger or frustration because you want your country to win. End of the day, it's 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 a, it's, it's a great feeling. Absolutely, that's exactly what I wanted to highlight, that it's a great feeling and the hu human feeling and you see the support because we feel it. I've noticed a couple of times in your voice when, you know, it, it, or in commentators' voice as professional that when it's going for them it's fine or when it's slipping away that momentum slightly changes. Not that the professional aspect changes, that's, you, that's your responsibility and you have to deliver that. But feelings are such that they're personal, nobody has a control or right over that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very tough sometimes and that too sometimes against India. I mean we haven't won a World Cup game against them I think ever. So <laughs> I remember the first game of the World Cup on 15th of uh, Feb or March. If I, you know, the first, uh, India playing Pakistan in Adelaide. It was quite stressful for me as well <laughs> because, uh, 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 and then obviously India won. Uh, but I, I, I was fine the next day, but that day after the game, I was a little depressed. That was, that's only natural. Yes, absolutely. Only natural. When they say India and Pakistan are playing, it's a game, it's entertainment, it's political, a lot of fun, and the atmosphere is completely different no matter what stadium you go to. Absolutely. India-Pakistan, they talk about ashes. Ashes is nothing compared to India-Pakistan. The pressure we go through before the game, a couple of days before the game, from through your parents, your friends, press, you know, uh, you got to win, you had to win, you know, you can't lose against India and vice versa. They go through the same pressure and both the countries are glued to television. So that's different pressure. I don't think so you can compare it with any other series in the world. No, you're absolutely right. When India and Pakistan are on a forum, when India and Pakistan are on a platform, there is no other game, and I personally believe that, that when they're the Lions and the Tigers, when they're out there on the field, it's about winning because your wives, your family, your children, and it's true, isn't it? it? We hear about it, but screens are broken when you lose. Yeah, 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 and obviously we also get depressed when this happens, but again, end of the day, we should realize it's a game. Somebody has to win, somebody has to lose, but as long as they fight till the last ball, uh, that matters to me. Absolutely, to control the feelings and that's what it's about. Wasim Akram, if you're just tuning in right now here, King of Swing, the legend, the one and only in his own field of expertise, brought something unique to the game and still a shining star. Going to take a break in, then we're going to come back to the final part of the show, which is why we're here this afternoon as well, touching base with Wasim and that's the HKSZ. TV, Cricket Academy, home of the stars. Going to take a quick break and come right back and continue and see what Wasim has to say. So stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back after the break. We'll see Makram, King of Swing, as we were talking, coming back to HKZ.TV's Cricket Academy, launched 9th of January with a vision, award winners, me personally with a vision, 
to bring inspiration to youth through celebrities, through legends like yourself, serving the community to bring about a sport, have the Metropolitan Police, have a lot of people backing us to say that it's, it's an amazing concept and what's been um, implemented in the UK. What's your feelings from that? Like you said, uh, whatever I've heard about it, read about it, it's a great uh, concept. Uh, the idea is in the in the end, uh, you're coaching the youngsters, the future of uh, English cricket and that through uh, to the legends of the game itself. You can't get better than that. Uh, imagine if I was the age of 10 or 9 or 10 and I've been getting coached by Brian Lara, it'll be ultimate for me. I'll be a different uh, player. Uh, I'll get a different sort of confidence from that sort of session and I think it's a great job. Keep it up and uh, hopefully you find some cricketers uh, from that bunch as well. I'm 100% I'm sure we will find some. We've got a bash coming up. We've launched just now HKSZ.TV's Kabir Ali testimonial bashes, which you're going to be participating and showing the art of your swing for the children in the morning session and you yourself who are a player in that game. What are your feelings on that? Mela, the festival, the Asian community, the multicultural community with the names that you're seeing that are already promos have gone out and it's going to be a mass international plastering on celebrating these testimonial bashes but with the academy and seeing these youngsters which you said is amazing getting an opportunity to go out become stars like yourselves on an international forum being broadcasted with man of the match prizes and to have your support on those three days at the same time what's your views to the international community about that including your play uh, super idea. Uh, so the idea is to, to uh, have the whole community together, have uh, three fun days and hopefully I'll be ready by then. <laughs> I'll be able to bowl 12 overs in three days. Uh, if I, I'll, I'll, I think I had to start bowling now soon. I'm playing a game tomorrow in Oxford so that'll be a good start. But again, like I said, I'm excited. Uh, it's a great concept and I think uh, it will be, it'll be, we'll be doing it on a regular basis as well. So uh, the idea is uh, again end of the day to, to, to uh, uh, obviously help the youngsters. Uh, to, they'll be meeting uh, all the legends, they'll be playing cricket, they'll be taking lessons from them in bowling, in batting, in fielding. So it's a perfect scenario and I think uh, well done to you guys and keep it up and uh, my full support with you guys. You ready to go out there with star versus star? Yes, very much so. I'm ready to go out there with Star vs. Star on 28th, 29th and the 1st of... Uh, 31st. Sorry, 28th, 29th, 30th and 31st of August. Absolutely. Wasim Akram, King of Swing. So if you want to see that swing and you want to see that ball or you want to be coached by Wasim on that morning of those three mornings and be part 28th is the youth start, 29, 30, 31st, the extravaganza bashes that you're watching, celebrating Kabir Ali's testimonial matches which are going worldwide, taking the concept within his year of testimonial worldwide to other jurisdictions so the international community can benefit from that. What's your views with that star versus star? So which means that you will be given the opportunity to travel like a tour, like you have done many of times in your career. Yeah, it should be fun. To, to uh, be on the tour again and uh, obviously we have a lot of uh, com our communities uh, spread it all over the world and they're everywhere and they love this sport it's in their blood and I'm quite excited for this project and I think um, hope uh, next year we don't know where we're going but we'll be definitely out of England and we'll be traveling as a team so as two teams so it should be great fun. Any hesitancy in coming up against the current players in the way you're playing? Not really. I mean, I, I should be okay, I think. <laughs> no, you're okay. That's what I'm saying, that you're up for the challenge because they should be ready to be facing you in the bowling side. I, I'm up for the channel, but I think there's no point, uh, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> egging them up right now. Uh, let me see how I prepare myself uh, two, three days before the uh, the tournament and then I'll say some stuff. There you go. Two, two <laughs> three days only prepare before the tournament. That in itself is a challenge and it's a game. It's enjoyment like we always say. It's for fun, for entertainment and bringing you the best at all times. That's the only time I'm going to take because we've got to do a quick promo for you guys and then we're going to be off all the way back to London. Wasim, bye. Thank you very much for this time. Pleasure meeting you. You're a star. We pray that you continue to shine, serve your community, serve Pakistan, serve your family and be a shining example to the global community. Any message Yad, you'd like to give to the world? No, no, thank you very much and uh, uh, my message, I've given the message a little while before to the youngster but please come and uh, join us on the 28th, 29th of July, uh, 29th, 30th of July and the 1st of August. Uh, August, it's all in August, it's not July, it's 28, 29, 29, 30, 31st of August. 
29th, 31st of August. Come and watch me and uh, all the greats uh, for Kabila is benefit here. It should be fun. Testimonial, yeah. But we're going to take a professional clip. But Wasim, thank you very much for joining us. HKZ.TV's Cricket Academy, www.hkzcricketacademy.com. TV, www.hkz.tv. Twitter, you know, HKZ underscore dot TV. Call us in the offices, 0208 215 1975. Facebook, HKZ and Saeed Ajmal ICA. Again, HKZ.TV Network, Facebook. Any messages for Wasim? Anything for celebrities, anything that you'd like to be a participant of, drop us an email or give us a call. Once again, Wasim, thank you very much for your time and it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure. I think I better shut the show because I don't even realize I go on and on and on and we'll get on with the promo and then we'll take your leave. Thank you very much. Enjoyed every minute of it and good luck. Thank you very much indeed. Stay tuned, viewers. Don't go anywhere because we've got a long journey back to London with the shows planned for tonight live.